What this section does is tests a claim about a mean, a population mean, usually. So this one's used a lot more than what we just did earlier. Why is it this method important? Is because it tells us uh, on average, how does the sample work with respect to the population? So let's look at the first part. Testing a claim about mu with deviation not known. So it's very important that the deviations known because the deviation, no matter what the mean tells us, the mean is an average of just your, your sample, your, your data. But what the variance or deviation tells us is what's the average distance the numbers are from your population mean. Yeah, so here we're gonna look at When our row is unknown, we have to estimate Let's estimate the row with S, with a sample standard deviation. So what we're looking here is this. The deviation of all your means is the deviation over your samples. Typically, what they're, if they're the same, if we know them. So the standard, standard deviation of the sample with the sample mean, no, only of the sample, it, it approximates, it's, it is the same as the population. But if we don't know the row, the deviation, then we have to approximate it with this. We have a sample deviation. Okay, remember, we don't have the population mean or the deviation. Neither do we have the population mean. So there's nothing, since there's nothing in there about the population, since population information is not known, we have to use the t test. or commonly known as the student T distribution. That's our test statistic.
Remember last time we talked about equivalent methods that the critical value method and the p-value method were the same and that the confidence interval method sometimes gave us different solutions. So what we have to do here to do this, we need know the sample size. We're looking at that. We have to have the sample mean. The standard, the sample deviation. And this is usually given somewhere in the statement. So um, and it's usually used as part of the uh, null hypothesis because, again, we don't know much about this stuff, but we have the population mean it, it's got to be stated. Same conditions. We have to have simple data samples. They have to be finite. They have to be... Uh, independent. And each outcome has to be the, the uh, not, not dependent, but uh, each outcome has to be has to be uh, a valid, valid solution. In other words, if your answers are all positive, you can't have a negative answer. So our test statistic we're using the t score. So that's the other table. So we have the reason we needed the population mean is is because we have to do the top part here. So it's the X bar, which is the mean, minus the population of the means. Whenever we use a T chart, we have to have, we have to know two things. Actually, three things, I really. One, the degrees of freedom. And that is simply n minus 1. So the degree of freedom is n minus 1. We have to know whether it's a one-tail or two-tail test. And we have to know alpha. Get my tables here. P table. Because the T chart, the T table, on the left column is your degree of freedom. That's N minus one. And you have to know whether it's a one tail or a two tail test. If it's a two tail test, if you look at the alphas, if alpha is 0 0.05, then on one tail test, it's going to be 0.25. Like we said last time, it's it if so looking normally we deal with one tail right test. 
whatever our alpha was. If we now if it's two tail tests, we double it. So each of our values here, it's a one tail test. If it's 0 0.05 for a two tail test, we double it. So it's 0 0.1. And then we look on the chart down there and it tells it'll tell us what area is to the left of that critical value. As always, all of these examples we have to do is we have to make sure that all of our sample data, our distribution, is normally distributed. So it's normally distributed. And N has got to be bigger than 30 for, for a t-test. No, actually, it could be or because we we can look at smaller because our t chart our t chart goes all the way down to standard deviation of one I mean, uh, degree of freedom one, so this could be or. So we're not restricted by sample size. Ooh, whoa, sorry, not working right. All right, so let's look for an example here. For the t-test, the mean is zero because the positive is to the right, left is negative to the left. Um, what else do we have to know about this? Um, shall be normally distributed, T's in the middle. Yeah, that's about it. Depending on this, the sample size. Yeah, yeah, that should be. I mean, looking at some other ones that the bigger n is because our ends go more than two thousand. It go even larger than that. So the the larger the sample size, the more accurate we get to the standard normal distribution, and, and the more accurate our values become. Let's look at example one. Adult sleep. Okay, we're going to use the p value method. Right. Also, no. We're going to use the same three, p-value, the confidence interval, and the critical value method. So it's going to be the same same stuff over and over and over, but let's look at this one. Okay, the author obtained times of sleep for randomly selected adult subjects, including included in the National Health and Nutrition Examination Study. And those times in hours were listed below. The times were four, eight, four, four, eight, six, nine, seven, seven, ten, seven, eight. eight. Okay, here's the unrounded statistics of the sample. So we have Two, four, six, 
8, 10. So n equals 12. The average of all these is 6.8333333 forever in hours. And our standard deviation of our sample was 1.992. Four zero nine eight four in hours. A common recommendation is that adults should sleep between sleep between seven and nine hours each, each night. So that's your claim. Is it a simple random variables? Did all these come from randomly? Yeah, they just randomly selected people to do it. Are they independent? Yeah, because this person's sleep doesn't bother this one's person's sleep. So it satisfies all the conditions we need. Ah, there's one requirement. Is it normally distributed? Because it doesn't have 30. So if it's not 30, then it's got to be normally distributed. So, so it is not it is not normally distributed, right? Well, we don't know yet. Let's look at this. We have one, two, three. We have three at four. Eight and four. Six. So we have eight. Five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. We have one at ten. We have one at nine. Three, seven. Two have eight. Two, eight, three, seven. Three, seven. One, six. One, six. And no, five. five. So, okay, now individually, no. But if we look at four and five, six and seven, eight and nine and 10, if we combine them in groups of two, then what would our graph look like? So four and five, it's got three also. Six and seven. One, two, three, it's got four. Eight and nine. One, two, three, four. And ten, one. So now it looks roughly um, normally distributed. Because this part here looks normally distributed. Since this part here is not there. So we can adjust our, our data to make it look any how we need to. Uh, excuse me, sir. Eight is three times, not two times. Okay, so then this one goes up even higher. Makes it even more. It goes up and goes down at the end. So it has a roughly distribution. It's just that four is just the outlier here. So we would, instead of taking individual samples, we'd now take it into groups. So it's the condition for normally distributed. That's why I have to put it in. Does it have this type of shape? 
I mean, it doesn't have to be exactly a bell shape. It just has to be bell shape in structure. So our steps. What's our claim? Adults should sleep between seven and, and nine hours. Okay, so that's what the claim is. Let's put that in symbols. So what we're looking for is the, we're, we're trying to estimate the population. So the population average Has 82 divided by 12? No. It should, because what they're saying is the test is finding that they should, they should sleep between seven and 10 hours. That means the population is sleeping less than seven hours. Because they're saying it's unhealthy. So the author obtained sleep time of random selected adults. And those times and hours listed below. Here are the rounded statistics of those things. A common recommendation is that adults should sleep between seven and nine hours. Use the p-value method for and claim that the amount of sleep for adults is less than seven hours. So that's what's claimed. Test the claim with an alpha equal to 5, bless you, the, the, this is your claim. This is the observation. So that means, is this our, what's the opposite of that? What's the opposite of that? What's the opposite of less than 7? Greater than or equal to 7. Is it greater than or equal to or just greater than seven? No, because you have to have somewhere. What if somebody sleeps exactly seven? Are they, is that good or bad? So you have to have every possibility taken care of. Okay. Because that's strictly less than seven. We have something at, well, what happens at seven or above? Which one never has equal sign? The H1, H1 never have an equal sign. Right. So the HO would be the other one. So we'll look at four. We're saying that alpha is 0 0.05. So is this a one-tail or a two-tail test? <clears throat> um, that's two-tail test. How can it be two-tail test? You divide um, alpha by two, gives you... No, it's a one-tail test. Mm -hmm. Whereas we're saying that to test our hypothesis, we need less than seven hours. 
Okay. And it gives us, did it give us our, it said the average is 6.83 hours. So we're trying to say that, okay, what is it at seven hours? Because we have to find the critical value here at seven hours. So what is our what is our critical value? This is the formula we just talked about. Our X bar, our average, average. is 6.8333333. 3, 3, 3, 3, 3. Minus our population average, which we're, we're speculating is seven. Our standard deviation was 2.199, uh, 1.992409484, divided by we had 12 samples. Since it's six minus seven, we know the answer is going to be negative. It's going to be zero point two nine zero. So, what's our degree of freedom? Um, minus as x bar minus one minus, minus n. The degree of freedom is eleven. All right, so that we have 11. We're looking at the t-test at 0 Hmm. So we look at this. That's our T value at point two nine zero. Where was Mike's card? Hmm. Trying to find it on a chart. Okay, notice on here, our point two, negative point two nine zero.
we can't find that anywhere on our chart. So what we have to do is since we have a negative value, we have to go over here to negative 0 0.290, negative 0 0.290 is here, the ninth, is 3.8. 3. 3. 8. Oh, it's just, I did something wrong here. Hold on. Maybe we're not supposed to round it up. No, 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 it's not that. Hold on. So we know that our T is equal to... 1.796. No, it's negative... 0 0.2, okay. 2.90. And our X bar is a 6.833 hours. And our alpha was 0 0.05. 0 0.05. Okay. See, it's the critical value. That's good for you, but this alpha, it's a one tail test to the left of 0.5. Oh. We have to double it. One zero degree of freedom is eleven. But yeah, we, we have to reject it. I'm, I'm trying to phrase it in a much more logical way. Since our T value, our test came out to be here, our which is below the whole average. That means our, our alternate hypothesis is correct. It has to be less than seven hours and check it is. So we failed to reject the HO. No. Okay, I, there it is. Okay, there it is. Ah. I was looking at it wrong. I was looking at it wrong. So our mean Big was 6. 6.9 is a something like that. Our critical value was negative 1.790. Mm -hmm. Our calculated value was negative 0 0.290. Is this supposed to be there? Yeah, because they're both negative. So this is our critical value. Since this is now in the tail, that means 
So the two minus zero point two nine zero supposed to be after the mean, because the mean is supposed to be seven. So the two will come before. No, no, we're, you're looking at wrong here. Okay. What, this is testing because the, the the values are what the values are. The mean is less than that, so we're going to have a negative. We're going to have a negative t value. Check. So that is our critical value. It's either going to fall on one side of that thing. If it falls on this side, if it falls on this side, we fail to reject. If it falls on this side, we reject. Because this is what corresponds to our statement here. Our hypothesis saying that, our alternate hypothesis saying that we have to have less than seven hours of sleep. And the current average, it's more than seven hours of sleep. Doing our calculations. We got our critical value here, our, our statistic test, our test statistic here. Since it falls in here, we fail to reject the null hypothesis. I was just looking at it wrong. So where do we put our n value? What's that? Where do we put our alpha rather? If the critical value is minus 1.796, so where is the alpha going to be 0 0.05? Well, no. We don't really need that just now because that, that tells us that there's a 0.05% chance that it falls in here as opposed to a 95% chance over here. So that's, this is how they, that falls into play is the critical, I mean, the alpha will tell us that if it falls in here, there's only a 5% chance that goes against what the norm is. This is what happens most of the time. 90% of the time, this is what happens. And that's what, that's what this is here. If it falls on into the tail, then It, it shows that we were correct. So are we following figure 8.8 .8 or not? No, we're following, we're following the, uh, the numbers. Okay. I mean, even if you use 8.8, .8, it says the same thing there. I, because it tells us that our point two nine is over here, and this is below our uh, critical value, so we fail to reject the null hypothesis. How many more do we got? more oh you know now we got to do the confidence interval method it's going to be the same i believe it's going to be the same information oh So our alpha is 0 0.05, use a 90% confidence interval.
our claim says that our average number of sleep is, so this is our claim. H sub zero is mu is equal to seven. H sub one says it's less than seven. So what does the confidence interval look like? Let's just see how to focus. What does the confidence interval, interval method look like? So it's going to be our So we're saying the population, we have our 6.8 minus our error, 6.8 or nine plus our error. You know, standard deviation given. It was an old step. Standard deviation is so. We found our T value. As being. Negative 2.9. four. Square root of 12. It's going to be negative. Point two nine times one point nine nine two four zero nine eight four divided by Square root of 12. There's negative. Zero point one six seven. Yeah, I know I'm not supposed to be running it now, but so we have six point eight three plus point one six seven
equals 6.997. And then 6. Point, oh, what is that? 98. Six mean is six point eight three. Deviation is one point nine nine two. Others. So six point six six three is less than seven. So we still reject the hypothesis. Yeah, I mean, it's gonna be, it's gonna be the same solution. So yeah, what we have here, So these are still pretty big. Well, no, it's this seven doesn't fit inside there though. Seven, the, the deviation is less than seven. So yeah, it's the same thing. It's at, outside the range. So who failed to reject a Joe? And the same procedures, except now for a two tail test. Same form as everything except now in the chart, you use a two tail test instead. Hold it, let me see something. Did uh, I forget? Let's see here. Let me put on pause. 